Hello, this is Trinot. This is Case Blue in Guderian Split Creek 2. Just a reminder what that means. It's this giant map of, uh, of units of the German offensive into Russia, 1941 to 1943. So on the sequence of play, the very first thing you do before any player takes their given turn is the weather determination and first player determination segments. Weather determination is what it what you think it would be. Uh, we roll to see what the weather's like this game turn. And there happens to be a handy dandy chart for that right here, the weather table. I'm going to roll one die for the basic condition and one die for the flight roll. We're going to look at the time of year. It is October 1st and 8th. It is automatically dry weather on the second turn of October. So um, I'm going to mark the weather over here as, well, as dry. OK. Then um, flight roll is, in fact, rolled here. And it is, um, I roll one die. And on a one, it'll be limited flight on a two to six it'll be something else. A two to six, so flight is fully functional. So now what is the first player determination segment? That is the second part of the first pre-turn phase. What happens is, and I'm going to use the red dies Russians, the black dies Axis, whoever rolls the higher roll gets to choose whether to go first or second in the game turn. Now, the implications of that are that if the Russians win the roll and choose to go first, they will essentially have gone twice in a row before the German player can react. Uh, this system allows for things like double turns where um, a player goes at the end of one game turn and then goes at the beginning of the uh, next game turn, essentially going twice in a row. And Normally, if you are when the first player roll, you choose to go second because that means that no matter what, um, if the other player wins the roll, they can't go twice in a row and you have the op opportunity to go twice in a row. Of course, you don't want to do this if uh, the other player just finished their turn. It was devastating enough that you want to recover. So we're going to roll and see what we get. Tied, so we'll roll again. All right, the Russians choose whether to go first or second. So let's go through the Russian mindset. They just recovered their defensive stuff. Not much attacking happened. And I think they feel pretty confident that they are defended enough. None of their particular spots are out of supply. They just supplied all their people before. So really, there's not really much an advantage of them going um, first right now. They can't really press too much to screw with the Germans. And the Germans are so low on supply from past turn, they're not going to spend this turn attacking, hopefully. So really, all we're going to do is choose for the, as the Russians, we're going to choose for the opponent to go first. So let's celebrate by moving the turn marker. Oh. All right, so the Germans will go first. Hello, this is Trenant, and this is Case Blue and Guderian's Blitzkrieg 2, full campaign. So I'm on the second turn of the game, the first player turn, the, the Axis are going. And uh, I just finished everything but cleanup now. Um, so let's talk about what happened. Um, over here, most of it was just, uh, I got 16 supply points and I spent about all of it just trying to restock everything. Um, over here, there were some guys on low ammo and I refueled them. Uh, this also means that I didn't do much combat this uh, turn. 
I did a little bit, but I really wanted just to keep my reserves stacked right now. I still have some supply right there, but otherwise I just restocked over here. Um, not much movement. As far as reinforcements goes, um, got some supply points, got some troops, and mostly I'm just pushing them to the front, uh, hopefully building up for a stronger turn um, in turn three. Maybe have to wait till turn four, we'll see. Um, over here, refit some aircraft. Didn't do much here just because, again, uh, too little supply and not really much advantage pressing over there. Over here, I still have this group in a pocket, so really I don't need to go after them. I did um, create a truck extender right over here under the 7th Panzer, and I shoved an HQ up there too. And, uh, uh, all right. Not going to bother moving it too much. Yeah. So there's a truck extender right there. And that thing essentially stretches my supply sources. It doesn't stretch my actual um, on map supply, but when it comes to trace supply, I can go into enemy territory without having to rely on railroads. I um, also marked the map with these black markers. That's the German railheads which is the extent they can use railroads. And uh, I'm just trying to keep track of where they are and where my railroad units are so that I can extend the railheads farther down and have supply farther down, so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, over here is just a, strip, a push to get over here and maybe get to uh, uh, this city right here. Not going to pronounce it, not good at Russian pronunciations. Again, no combat here. Um, couldn't even restock. This area was drained of supply a little quickly. Um, just has transport points going in now. I think I tried, mostly I just spent supply points fueling to get people up here. Um, same thing over here, I think. Yeah, this, this area still... Well, I did um, attack these guys pretty okay. No, I think I just bombed them. Um, spent a lot of points on artillery barrages too, just to disincentivize the Russians from uh, attacking me next turn. Um, over here, there is a unit that is sitting under some supplies in a swamp, but just cutting him off instead and pushing forward because he really can't attack that well. At least I hope not. So I have an extender up here as well um, in that little stack where the low ammo sign is, I want to say. And essentially I'm going to, um, yeah, I'm just trying to make extension points. It's interesting because you don't I don't know how I'm going to... I'm going to need more uh, truck points to make more extenders to get farther in, so hopefully that'll come into later turn reinforcements. We'll see what the... Uh, and what behind the lines the uh, Axis is thinking about sending to this front. It's kind of out of my hands and in the game's hands at this point. Um, yeah, so again, this is not really much of a combat turn. It was more of a... Um, just refreshing my supply stocks and reassembling turn. Have some supplies still over here because nobody fought last turn and nobody's fighting this turn. I did send a division, that one right there, the 2299, which is not the real thing unless I got really lucky with my placement. Again, I didn't um, actually mark the unit IDs as they were assigned in the scenario book because that would have taken like twice as long to set up. So, but we have the 1st Cavalry uh, lined up here, and um, not much else. I did have combat over here, and I got exploit. Uh, I made this 1111 unit run away, who should be disorganized because he ran two hexes away. Let's just mark that. But um, these units are not going to move much. Um, they're in a pretty great spot, so 
they don't really need to do anything there. I might move... Now this guy might move into the swamp up ahead. He will. Because that open terrain is a little treacherous and that swamp is really beneficial terrain for defense, for infantry. Um, I believe I have an extender up here as well. Um, near where the 17th Panzer uh, marker is. Let's just check that. Yep. A wagon extender it looks like. No truck extender. So that guy can draw trace supply and uh, feed the HQ up there. Um, down here, I actually have one person I didn't check was in supply. Uh, they survived their roll though, they so now they're just marked with an out of supply status. Um, I had an exploit unit. Um, who I need to move actually. Um, I haven't done exploit phase apparently. He has four movement points which is halved when doing exploit move. He totally is going to move. Let's see how far I can get. This, there's a 10 HQ right here and a 10 right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. He could get right here or this guy could go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So the question is do I want to extend my reach a little bit? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, he could actually go here. And, um, I don't know, I like... I'll figure out where he goes in a second. Uh, that's just a minor ending of turn thing, and then I'm going to clean up. Um... And that's a supply token that should be off the board. So over here, no attacks. Um, I just rejiggered everything, uh, changed some stuff to movement to combat mode that were in movement mode, put a reserve marker right there, have uh, this front. Basically, the Germans are on an active defense, uh, kind of. Or at least they are um, kind of just in defense mode while they build up the pressure and attack. Over here, not much. Uh, we had a combat over here, but it didn't work out too well for the uh, either side. I think it caused the step loss on one end and then the unit loss on that end. Um, so the headquarters is still defended. Over here, the map is still horribly maladjusted. Couldn't replenish ammo. I might check on that. I think I ran out of ammo before I could restock. Yeah, there's only truck points there. Over here, there was really no reason to create an offensive, though I did do a, try to do a bombing, I think, and it didn't work. Uh, i got to remember to do these things next time. Just shuffling units up to the front. Down here, nothing. Again, it's an ammo consideration. And I still need supply points. That probably isn't going to even attack next turn. Hopefully the Russians don't build up too much. So you can see how in a, a really strong offensive turn where you blast through supply points on one turn, it makes you starve the next turn or few. And so this game is about kind of like ebb and flow of pushing uh, offensives through a week or a month. And... Uh, that applies to both sides. We'll see what the Russians do on their turn and how they'll restock. Maybe they'll push an assault. We'll see. Um, as it stands, the Germans have a lot of work to do to get to Moscow and all their other objectives, and the Russians can keep on defending. We'll see how that goes. Hello, this is Trenaut, and this is Guderian's Blitzkrieg 2 in case blue. And I have just finished the second turn of the game, the bottom half. The Russians have just gone. And we have a fair bit of stuff that happened on their turn. I actually just did the whole turn off camera, didn't uh, update in between phases. I uh, wanted to just see if I could speed through this, and kind of did. I finished it in one day, which is sadly much faster 
than the last turn. Anyways, I got, um, I didn't get as many uh, replacements this turn, but I did uh, get some breakdown units from the reinforcement phase. I, as well as uh, a couple of replacement points, managed to squeeze that into like a one division or so. Up here is where most of them came in. Moscow seems to be the starting point for incoming troops and then they just get shuttled via either dashing along the roads or getting railroaded out um, onto the fronts. I got 20 supply points out there and I made a job of shuffling most of it to the fronts. <clears throat> And that actually went surprisingly well. I mean, sure, it's just a solitaire process, but darn, is it a lot of mental, heavy mental lifting. Because I have to essentially think of, okay, how much supply points is I'm bringing here? Am I bringing there, 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 there? In addition, um, I have to leave a few points of supply down at the Black Sea uh, to get some guys there. Thankfully, I have all of these nice little cubes to mark um, and tile spacers to mark what the hell's going on. And I also have wonderful plexiglass glare. I, I keep saying that, but and I have to apologize for it. it ugh. Can't really do much about it, except try to avoid it on screen. Anyways, so movement was most there was no overruns or anything. It was mostly a matter of... Uh, railing supplies in and getting troops up to the front and flipping them to the right modes and maybe getting a few to escape um, out of supply status. There was one finicky bit down here, I think. So you may notice there's a few Russians right here, right next to the axis, a uh, little truck extender outpost they have. And what I'm doing here is these guys are kind of in a pocket. Uh, at least that's what I recall the term being, where they are out of supply, essentially from Moscow uh, and from the main, from Mother Russia. And so what's happening is I'm having a truck transport supplies from Rezev over to this little pocket here that's worth keeping. And this st st stops me from having to spend tree bark soup markers, giving that to the axis, and it also uh, kind of, you know, so it, in addition keeps these guys alive in general. However, the way I have to do that is by having a truck shuffle supplies, and fortunately uh, that means I have to create this little escort right here. So that's the biggest thing that happened in the movement phase. And I also built a down in the, got this tight space. Even with like this big old room, I guess, I still am having to slide around trying to fit in. Anyways, over in the Black Sea, next to my war game senpai, Baka Dice, I have built a level 1 hedgehog right here because the Axis player, that's, in other words, I'm too stupid to realize I should have pressed an offensive here. And so, you know, if I'm at an advantage and have supply points, might as well hunker down. So let's talk about some combats. Um, nothing up here. I think I bombed these guys um, with some aircraft. I've actually been using artillery this game. I really was kind of almost surprised about that just because um, I keep I barely used it in other games I've played through but it seems like if you can handle the supply points for it, and especially in this game um, it's often really useful to do a barrage. Um, over here we had a lot of battles. Um, in the combat phase I did like max column mods or something and then even with a surprise roll still got the win. Um, 
this 736 is standing over the corpse of some Russian, uh, some Axis panzers, and then some other guys tried to, in reserve, tried to exploit, tried to take that guy out. He died. Um, so it was so not that great, and it leaves the Axis in position to uh, move in and possibly block off some supply lines, especially towards these guys. Uh, well, we'll see how that goes. The Axis doesn't have fuel anyways, who cares? And this is uh, me worrying about supply, essentially. Um, in fact, I think I need to feed off Matt for those guys real quick, but I'll get to that later. Um, they, there's enough supply points there for them to be alive, but still, I gotta remember that. That's what those green markers are for. No combat here outside of that. Um, outside of me forgetting how to keep track of, you know, the thousands of pieces on the map. Um, so over here, I tried to attack this unit and got thwomped instead. Uh, just suffered a bunch of step losses and that guy just sat there being groovy. Um, so that didn't work out too well. This guy, this 1333, and this 515 uh, suffered a step loss to make this guy retreat and get disorganized uh, with a little bit of help from that uh, artillery uh, brigade. And I released some reserves to get into the swamps here to be extra defensy. That's a word. This guy uh, actually managed to, was out of supply, but uh, survived the attrition roll partially and uh, is still there. He's probably not going to do much, to be honest. Um, so this right here, this DG unit here, um, ate the last of his on-map supply. He's out of supply otherwise, so he decided just to go for broke and attack that. Um, unit with the red cube on it failed and just decided to retreat away and because he retreated into enemy zone control he's disorganized which is really about the best you can hope for for him he's just totally boned um, that poor Russian division yeah the Soviets are interestingly are pretty good about sacrificing everything they have it's kind of dis depressing uh, this disorganized guy, also out of supply, um, also suffered a step loss. Um, just decided to move there to be a block in front of the Russians, uh, in front of the Axis, if he lives long enough at all. Over here, I think I had an okay combat. Um, this is where I stacked a ton of units. I spent like two supply points to fuel like eight different units. Um, to attack that one DG marker, and it caused a bunch of step losses to that guy, but there was enough stacks there for him not to retreat. Uh, the other guys, um, I think I had to take a step loss on the other end, but point being, um, the Russians took a loss, but the Axis took more of a loss, and they're still out of supplies, or they still are out of fuel to attack with, and they're still, and especially move with, and they're losing foothold unless they can get their shit together. And already explained that. Didn't really fight there at all. Up here. Had some interesting battles. He took use of artillery. I basically disorganized a group but got disorganized myself when the Germans reacted. They sent some bombers there, and I was like, hey, you know what? You're going to get weak, too. Tried to fight them. Didn't really work out for me. Um, I think what happened was uh, there was, like, essentially no step losses either way. Uh, or, like, the German the Axis didn't really get screwed over, and the Russians lost a step. So uh, I'm learning that attacking with the Russians, you just, you just want to have total advantage to even bother. Otherwise, playing the defensive is kind of in a good game here. Uh, the Russians move really slowly, so the kind of deal... But then again, the Axis are the ones who have to attack you. So you're luring them to your... 
home field advantage and then amassing the, you know twice, three, eight times as many odds against them and then hoping that your surprise rolls don't suck. Surprise rolls, of course, being the thing where it can change the odds ratio roll from like eight to one to two to one, one to two or something. Where it's like suddenly you had overrolling odds, but they surprised you, and suddenly you roll as if you were at a disadvantage. So that's actually the end of the Russian turn. I've done about everything except cleaning up and remove those disorganized markers and such. And then we'll move on to turn three and see how that madness goes. But before I do that, let's just do a quick zoom out. This glorious beast covered in my stupid cubes and plexiglass. Oh boy. Yep, just everything. All right, have a good one.